Okay, so now we're moving on to video number three in this series, and this is gonna be talking about the different types of restorations that we work with and the cements we're going to use. The first two videos are gonna talk about how we prepared those restorations, and then the second video is how we're gonna prepare the tooth. Now we're gonna put the whole thing together so you can see how we work with these different clinical situations. So let's review real quickly some of the different um, uh, restorations that we work with. Lithium disilicate. It is also commonly known as Emax. It's what a lot of uh, porcelain work is being done now in the front teeth for veneers, for crowns. There's also zirconia, very popular for posterior teeth. It's a very strong material. Uh, they have either zirconia with a layer on the uh, inside, and then they have an outer layer that they put another kind of porcelain, or they do the entire uh, thing is made out of zirconia. Doesn't matter which one of the two because we're just worried about the internal surface and how that's going to interface with the tooth and the cement or resin bonding material we're going to use in the process. And then, of course, there's always metal-based restorations. And these are things you're going to find with bridges, crowns, and onlays. Uh, they can be gold. They can be porcelain, or they can be regular uh, non-gold um, materials as well, but we have a metal-based type of crown work that we run into every once in a while. To kind of give you a, a basic idea of how we determine what we're going to prescribe for the different clinical situations is something like this. This is, this is going to handle 98% of the stuff that comes into the office. For posterior crowns, it's either going to be zirconia or a metal-based crown. These days, it's almost exclusively zirconia, full zirconia. For anterior crowns, we're going to use lithium disilicate, or remember again, that's called Emax. Posterior bridges, we're going to use zirconia or a metal-based restoration. Anterior bridges, still going to use zirconia. I know that lithium disilicate uh, Emax says you can do, say, a single front tooth like a lateral incisor, and on occasion we might, but by default, we're still going to go to the zirconia simply based upon its strength. Posterior implant crowns, again, either zirconia or metal-based. Anterior implant crowns, we're going to go with zirconia. And then for veneers, it's going to be lithium disilicate. Here are the three different cements that we're going to use in our office. Uh, this one is Relyx Looting Plus. It's by 3M. It's a full zirconia metal. Or, sorry, we're going to use it on full zirconia or metal. And then there's... Um, Panavia SA cement, we're going to use on Emax crowns. And then we're going to use 3M SB's Relyx veneer cement for veneers. And it could be Emax veneers, it could be feldspathic, but any kind of veneer is going to be using this kind of cement. Okay, so let's go through each one of these cements and how we're going to use them for the different indications. So for I call it normal zirconia. That means a zirconia that has a normal prep, that has a normal amount of retention. We're going to use this. If it had a low retention, we're going to use Panavia, which I'll get to here in the next few slides. Um, if we're going to use a zirconia on an implant abutment or PFM uh, or, you know, like a metal, then we're still going to use Relyax. So the Relyax is what we're going to use for three these three different clinical situations. And this references the... Um, the big table that I put together at the very beginning of the presentation, which looked like this. This is uh, the thing we're gonna use that we're kind of tying it all together. The first video went over this part, the second video went over this, now we're going over this part of the table. So if I scroll back down to, where were we? We were here, zirconia, okay. Uh, zirconia and how we use um, the looting. This is a resin modified glass ionomer cement. This is not a resin cement. It's a resin modified glass ionomer cement. A few other features regarding this is we have, a, it has a feature called a tack cure. What that means is you can put down the, the, the cement when you put it in place, you can just let it set for two minutes and then begin your cleanup. You can put it down and if you think you have a very well sealed margin, you can maybe wash off the excess uh, cement that has oozed out the sides. Um, or you can do what's called a tack cure, which means you hold it and you cure it five seconds from the buckle, from the lingual, from the occlusal. At that point, it still takes two people. Uh, one person's gonna hold the top of the crown down while the other person's going to floss to get the interproximal cement out. And then of course you uh, clean it all up and by that time, two minutes has gone by and the cement is pretty much set at that point. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's a resin modified glass ionomer and you get about 80 clicks per dispenser and takes about two clicks per single unit. So you get about 40 crowns out of this material. 
So let's imagine this. We just got back from the lab, a full zirconia uh, crown. What are we going to do? We're going to clean the internal surface like we talked about in the uh, previous video. And then we're either going to clean it by uh, painting Ivoclean on the inside, or we're going to sandblast it for 15 seconds. Remember, you simply just can't wash it off with water and look at it and say, oh, it looks clean to me. No, it needs to be either sandblasted or Ivoclean prior to moving forward with the next step. Um, going to wash off the tooth, isolate. We're going to put Microprime G, which is our Gluma, or sorry, our glutaraldehyde based desensitizer. Um, then we're going to mix up the cement and put the whole thing together. And like I just talked about, tack cure, wait for it to do its initial cold cure, however you want to move forward. What about a zirconia or metal uh, crown that's come off? Patient has been wearing it for years. It comes off. They're going to bring it in. I call it an old crown. Um, same kind of process. You're going to, of course, clean out all the cement off the tooth, all the cement off of the internal surface of the restoration. And then you're going to prepare it very similar to what you did with the new one. You're going to paint the internal surface or sandblast it um, and then uh, move on to the other steps. Okay. Implant abutments. Uh, we're either going to be putting on zirconia or a metal crown. You're going to, again, clean the internal surface of the restoration. And then you're going to clean off the abutment, washed and dried, isolated. We actually put Teflon inside the access hole just to kind of clean that off and to keep the cement from going inside and, and gumming up the access screw. Mix the cement, put it in place. Okay, let's move on to a resin cement. This is Panavia SA Cement Universal. This is made by Karari Dental. And this is going to be used really for two indications. It's going to be for your Emacs or lithium disilicate crowns, but also can be used for a zirconia that's got a low retention, a very small prep or tapered prep, and you don't think the resin modified glass owner is going to be strong enough to hold, then you can increase the retention uh, by using uh, this type of uh, cement. So if you go through the steps, you're going to not sandblast the Emacs, but you can sandblast the zirconia, obviously. Use the Ivoclean for sure on the Emacs. You're going to etch the internal surface of the Emacs, but you're not going to etch the internal surface of the zirconia. Monobond Plus, yes, put that on in both situations. Bonding agent, yes, you're going to paint that on. When you get to the tooth, you're going to etch uh, the kind of material that we use for uh, our bonding agent, etching may not be necessary, but we would by default like to etch and then go through our desensitizer and our bonding agent. Uh, but just know that in case the clinical situation is such that if you think you're going to etch, rinse, it's going to cause bleeding in the field, you can bypass that if you're using the uh, clear fill universal bond quick uh, bonding agent. And then you mix up the Panavia SA, put it in place. And again, you can tack cure it, not for five seconds like you did with the resin modified glass onomer. Instead, you're just going to go two seconds. It, it sets up much quicker. Okay. That is also a called a dual cure cement. It's a resin cement. The SA stands for self-adhesive. In the instructions, they actually say that you can, um, well, actually, here are the instructions right here. Uh, this comes right from um, Karari Dental's instructions. Again, if it's a silica-based glass ceramic, that's like your lithium disilicate, your um, Emacs, you're going to clean off the inside and then apply hydrofluoric acid. If it's a metal base or zirconia, you're going to sandblast. Remember, you don't sandblast here, but you sandblast here. Paint the internal surface with your bonding agent, which in our case is going to be the um, universal bond quick from Karari. Then it comes to the tooth. Again, just like we have mapped out up here, you're going to etch the surface, either total etch, select the etch, or if you're using this bonding agent, you don't have to etch at all. Um, paint it on the tooth, dry it, and then paint the internal surface of the, or I'm sorry, paint, uh, load the cement inside the crown, put it all together. Okay. Imagine this, it's a new Emacs crown from the lab. I think we just kind of went through these steps. Again, I will clean the inside, apply mono bond to the inside, and then use the clear fill universal bond quick on the internal surface. Now the crown's ready to go and be put on over the tooth. What about an Emacs crown that may have come off? We're gonna have to remove the old cement. Remember, don't sandblast it, verify the fit, and then clean the internal surface with the IvoClean. Then you're going to have to put the hydrofluoric acid etch inside there for 90 seconds. Wash and dry that. It should have this nice frosted appearance. Apply the Monobond Plus and then the bonding agent.
Okay, moving on to veneers. Lithium disilicate is going to be the material that most dentists are using as of this recording in 2020 for veneers, but feldspathic porcelain is always a good one, and so is pressed ceramic. Uh, obviously, with a veneer, you're never going to sandblast a veneer. Uh, you're going to use IvoClean to clean the internal surface. Yes, you're going to hydrofluoric acid etch, unless the lab has already done that for you. If they uh, haven't, then you need to do it yourself. Apply Monobond Plus, apply the bonding agent when you go to the tooth, phosphoric acid etch, apply your desensitizer, and then your bonding agent. Basically, you're going to use everything except for the sandblaster across this when you're doing uh, your veneer cement. This particular veneer cement does come in a couple different shades, everything from translucent to white, opaque. Uh, well, you can read it right here. Your A1, two, uh, A1, 3, and 5, and a B0.5. Okay. So again, you're going to use everything really in our arsenal here to get a veneer ready to be seated. You're going to use everything on the tooth to get it ready, and then you're going to put it all together. When you're done putting a light cured material, especially like for veneers, uh, it's been recommended. I don't know if it's absolutely necessary, but it is recommended to uh, somehow suffocate the surface or remove the air inhibited layer by placing some kind of glycerin over the surface. You can get a liquid strip from Ivoclar Viva Dent, or you can go on Amazon. Here's a big bottle of it for $53. This will probably last you for, I don't know, maybe your entire career. Five, 10 years for sure. It may expire by then, but you get the point. It's fairly cheap. It's not that much of a, of a high-tech product. I checked to see the CAS number is identical in both of these, which means that the active main ingredient is identical. When you are getting ready to put something in place, bonding something specifically in place, uh, sometimes it bleeds and you know that you don't want to have bleeding into the site or onto the tooth when you're trying to bond it together. So we want to stop bleeding. And many times we've used these products called ferric sulfate. Ferric sulfate comes in astringent, viscostat, or Kisco Dental has one called Cutrol, which works really well. The percentage or the the concentration is 15.5, 20, and 50% respectively. Um, but there's a problem. It's ferric sulfate. And most of the instructions will tell you not to use ferric sulfate as that may interfere with the bonding. And so they say aluminum chloride should be used, but minimally. And this works okay. It's not as good as some of these, but it does work good enough. You'd rather have the tissue clean or at least have it not bleed into the site than to you know, have a bleed. So if you have to use something, use this viscostat clear. It's the aluminum chloride. Okay. Um, again, this is just taken from the ultra dense, uh, marketing stuff. It's, um, it's what they kind of want to use for the bonding in the anterior region. And to revisit lastly, this, um, this table that we're still working on putting everything together. Uh, we just went over all the different restorations and how we handle them. And so we can make sure that when it's all put together, it fits and is going to function for many, many years to come. So. Uh, next video coming will be actually on how to handle porcelain as far as adjusting it and polishing it, because uh, sometimes you have to do that to make sure the bite is right. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.